Hey, thanks for joining us here on Game Time Basketball Style. I'm Maurice Patton. This is Chip Cirillo um, with the high school sports team here at the Tennessean. And um, I know everybody's thinking about football, but um, kind of got to divide your attention here for the next few weeks as um, basketball starts up this week with um, Hall of Champions games, and then it'll be full-fledged next week. And, and we've... Um, both done our boys and girls preseason pre previews or, or primers as we call them around here. Um, we've listed our top 10 teams on each side, um, regardless of class. We've got our top 10 players, boys and girls. So um, be sure and check those out on, on Tennessean.com. And Chip did a, um, an article on the, um, the Christ Presbyterian boys team that'll be going for their third straight class AA championship and, and got a lot of good stuff in there wedged in amongst all of the footballs. So um, be sure and check those out. We're going to um, take a look at who we picked as our top teams um, here in the preseason. And, and I'll kick it to Chip here. Tell us ab about your boy selection at the top. Well, we have CPA at the top. Of course, they've won the last two class AA state titles. And the big story there is, of course, Jalen Lindsay. He was a Mr. Basketball winner last year, and he transferred to Huntington Prep in West Virginia, so that's a huge loss for them. Yet, remarkably, they, they still are the favorites in a lot of people's minds to win a third, a three-peat, and win it again. And that's mainly because they have so much depth, and it's, of all the kids that are coming back, a lot of seniors, a very veteran team. And as crazy as it sounds, Coach Maddox said that um, – he thinks this could be the best team ever at CPA, which is kind of scary. That's kind of crazy. They lost when, a lot. When you, when you talk about the fact that Jalen Lindsay had committed to Providence and, and will probably be signing here in the next bit, um, like you said, you lose a guy like that off your team, six seven guy that can handle it and, and shoot it and, and post you up, you lose that, and, and it sounds as though they're not expected to miss a beat, and that, that reflects well on – like you said, those guys that they've got coming back, Braxton Blackwell and, and Braxton Bonds and Jake Allsmiller, who is committed to Georgia Southern. So um, they still got some players over there, obviously. Yeah, and especially the Blackwell kid. He's got only a sophomore, 6'8 sophomore. He already has 15 offers, and some of the top programs in the country are looking at him. And not, not of these top programs haven't quite offered him yet, but – you know, he's in the mix with, with some of the, you know, the Kentuckys and those kind of schools. So. And, and your number two team – yeah, Ainsworth, um, they always seem to be there. Oh, and they're a similar situation in the sense that they've lost Corn Elder, who was, who was Mr. Everything the last three years when they won those state titles. And now the big question, can they win it without him? And uh, Coach Bauer says they don't really have any any, t any height, so it's going to be a five-guard lineup. And, but that suits – he likes to play a real quick, uh, frantic pace, so a lot of fresh bodies in there, so – they they know how to play with that kind of uh, personnel. So, and he he just always seems to find a way to win. So it'd be interesting to see what the what the new cast can do with our, with our corn. I, I think the guy obviously to watch on that team, and and I think this guy was kind of waiting on corn because I think watching them play a couple of times, it just looked like to me that Andrew Fleming kind of deferred to corn on a lot of occasions, and, and I think you're going to really see him step up and step forward now that corn has gone. Yeah, you're, you're really right about that. And I remember last year when corn was still in the football playoffs, uh, the first three or four games, Andrew was averaging something like 40 points a game. It was some insane amount. And, of course, it, you know, once corn came back, that, that number went way down. But another guy that came into his own was DeAndre Furby. And I, I remember a play, he almost won the state title with uh, corn and him went in uh, two-on-one and, uh, the ball bounced off the rim, and Furby almost dunked it in for the win, but it was just after the buzzer. They still ended up winning the, the title, but he's he's coming to his own, and, and uh, the the bone kid is going to be good too. So he, a lot of people probably remember his brother at Brentwood Academy. So uh, those three, I think, will be the okay. really big play big roles. So on the girls' side, Riverdale has won um, back to back to back. Um, they've won so many over there that it's hard to keep up. They've won four AAA titles in seven years. They've won the last two last year under first-year coach Corey, Corey Barrett. Um, they've won 58 straight games now, and so until they get knocked off, you've got to feel like they're the favorite over there. They've had two kids, um, and, and I just went blank. Um, Shelby Davenport and, and Alexa Middleton, who was our player of the year last year, um, both have signed um, – 
major college scholarships. Um, Alexa's going to UT, Shelby's going to Clemson. They've had a couple of others that have signed as well. And, and if they can make it through District 7 AAA, they've got a chance at winning the whole thing. Our number two team is, is Blackman. And um, like I said, they're also in 7 AAA. They, they're split by Highway 96 over there in Murfreesboro. And um, they're going to have some, they're gonna have some battles this, this season. Um, Blackman's really a young team with their point guard, um, Crystal Dangerfield, who played on the, um, the national under-16 team this past summer. And um, Alex Johnson's a junior over there inside. They've, they've got a lot, a lot of talent on that team as well. And it's really kind of tough picking between those two for one and two. But, but with the, um, the success that Riverdale's had to this point, they kind of tipped it that way. But um, these things certainly aren't set in stone, and, and we'll see a lot of movement in those over the course of the season. Again, you can check out both our boys and girls mid-state top tens and our, our preseason primers on Tennessean.com, and, and be sure and give those a look and um, check back with us. We'll be trying to check out some basketball as we go through the football playoffs. I'm Maurice Patton. This is Chip Cirillo. Thanks for joining us here on Game Time.